When it comes to the SEC and the NFL draft, everyone knows the household names. The Brock Bowers, Malik Neighbors, Jaden Daniels, and they're going to be foundational pieces for their franchises moving forward. But they're not the only ones testing in Indianapolis. There are a ton of SEC players currently meeting with teams, working out on drills, and hopefully doing enough to prove they belong in the NFL after a stellar college career. But my question today, who has the most to gain with an impressive combine performance or an exceptional interview with teams? So much so that they might even find their way into the end of the first round. What's going on, SEC Unfiltered? It's Cole Thompson here. Make sure that you hit the ring notification and subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss a single thing that we're doing on this channel because we talk SEC sports daily. Make sure that you also like the video. Comment down below. Who do you think has the most to gain from the NFL Combine this year? Tell your friends, your family, your mortal enemies, best of bros about this channel. Make sure that you're also following us on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever you call Facebook. Facebook at SEC Unfiltered. Follow me on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson and my own YouTube channel at Mr. Cole Thompson. Make sure that you also download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Google, Apple Music, Spotify, we're all over there. And for the number one content surrounding SEC sports, make sure that you go ahead and visit secunfiltered.com. So, who has the most to gain this year at the NFL Scouting Combine? We're here live in Indianapolis, which is awesome. And we get to watch these players actually move and shake and do their stuff during drills. But there are going to be a few players that potentially could end up gaining a lot more momentum. A ton of SEC talent every single year comes out. And this year's no different. But who are the ones with the most to gain? Let's start off with the quarterbacks. South Carolina's Spencer Rattler. It's so funny the way that people talk about Rattler, especially when you look at it from a 365 angle. He was never going to be the guy at Oklahoma after Caleb Williams decided to finally break onto the scene. And then he brought you to relevancy back at South Carolina. It wasn't perfect, but a lot of the tools were what coaches look for. And he already played in an NFL pro style offense underneath Dow Loggins. So if the translation is very quickly able to adapt, learn on the fly, and show the arm strength, elusiveness, physicality, and more importantly, show off a little bit of speed, Rattler might get into that conversation of QB5, QB6. And this is where we're talking maybe around round three, early round four, definitely a developmental quarterback, but one that might have a little bit more upside. No one really thought that we were going to see much of Dak Prescott when he got drafted by the Dallas Cowboys out of Mississippi State. And lo and behold, he's gone on to have an exceptional career. Maybe it's the exact same thing with Rattler. Speaking of other players that could have exceptional careers, Jalen Wright is definitely a running back that has the most ground to gain because there's not really an RB1. You talk to people around the league, everyone has a certain blend of what they look for. And to me, physicality, elusiveness, downfield trajectory, everything that you're looking for, Jalen Wright possesses. And now that Jonathan Brooks is still doing with the torn ACL, despite saying that he will be cleared for the start of training camp, there still is speculation that someone else could take over. When you look at the way Wright plays, he's physical, he runs through motions, he's not afraid to lower the shoulder and get a bit more contact. If the speed matches the power, this could be RB2. And we're talking about a guy that probably lands somewhere in round three, maybe the back end of round two, over a 1,000 rushing yards during his time when he was in Knoxville. He was the staple of this offense for Josh Heupel. I'm very excited to see what he brings to the table for any NFL team. And if he can pair well, just like he did with Jabari Small in Knoxville, there's a very good shot that we are going to be seeing a lot more of Jalen Wright, and it just needs to be the right fit. Speaking of right fit, Tavondre Sweat. Yes, I know Texas still is not in the SEC, but let's be real. They are going to be big time contenders, and who wouldn't want to see Tavondre Sweat at 365 pounds terrorize your quarterback? Literally every team in the SEC, and this is a big week for him because he didn't measure in at the combine. I mean, at the, at the uh, senior bowl down in Mobile. That was a major red flag for teams. They were afraid of his weight. They were afraid that he was not going to be in shape when it came to playing. And he wasn't going to be a three-down player despite winning the Outland Trophy and Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. Well, he said yesterday during meetings that, yes, he will measure in. Yes, he will run drills. And, yes, he will weigh in, which he came in at 366 pounds. And last season, he apparently played at 365 pounds. So, there's at least optimism here to believe that if he can have a good overall showcase, show to teams that he is physical, but more importantly, he's elusive and that the weight isn't going to hold him back or hinder his success, 
this is a guy that probably starts getting in that conversation roughly around early round two, maybe late round one. So far, it does seem like he is going to be a player with a lot of inside upside. I mean, intrigue. The main question turns to where does he best fit as a one tech, as a three tech, as a zero tech, as a five tech? Where is he going to find his success? And more importantly, is he going to be able to fit in a multitude of defenses? That's going to be a key element. Speaking of players that probably could actually gain first round net, uh, buzz, I was talking to a couple scouts last night and Edron Cooper was the first name that popped up. Man led the SEC in tackles for losses last season with 17. He was an exceptional blitzer underneath Mike Elko's defense and then translated over to DJ Durkin's defense. There is not a number one linebacker. You can ask a thousand people in the world and they'll all tell you different stories, whether it be Peyton Wilson out of NC State, whether it be potentially you look at a guy like Edron Cooper, maybe it's Tyrone Hopper from Mizzou, but this is where you separate the men from the boys. This is where you finally get to see which players are going to actually make that jump. There's something about having a blitzing linebacker on your team that is physical against the run and can play in space. That's Cooper to a T. And I do think that if he has an exceptional showcase this week, it is going to be very hard not to consider him at the top linebacker in this class. Some people believe he's LB1. I think by the end of the week, he will prove that. Now the question turns to, is he a day one talent? or a must-have staple on day two. Darius Robinson from Mizzou. This is another first-round talent. Guy was exceptional at the podium, really, uh, really funny, really charismatic, was more than happy to answer questions left and right. But the thing that stood out about him is that he realized he's a big guy and he's a physical guy. So if you can find a defense that loves that big physical swarm mentality, met with multiple teams primarily in the late 20s, early 30 picks, this is where first round conversation comes in. He is one of those guys that we see every few years where they have a good senior bowl and then they crush at the combine. And then after all that, they eventually make it to the NFL as a first round pick. Darius Robinson is following in the exact same trajectory as Hassan Reddick back in 2017. He already crushed down the senior bowl in Mobile. He so far has crushed it with the interview processes. He's met with multiple teams. Good first explosive step. Physical uses his 295-pound body to bulldoze over offensive tackles. If he can provide that, there's a very good shot that we hear his name go round one. You're already talking about other players like Penn State's Chop Robinson, Dallas Turner from Alabama, Biazzi Latu being top 15 picks. Someone's got to be in play in the mid-20s. Darius Robinson, very strong showcase at the Combine, might end up being that guy. Another Texas guy, Adonai Mitchell. You already know that Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. will not be working out this week. One is potentially working out at LSU's Pro Day, but everyone else has room to develop, especially a Mitchell. This is a guy who is going to go down in history for literally being one of the best college football playoff players ever. One touchdown in every single playoff game that he appeared in, including two national championships at Georgia. And the second he came over to Texas, you watched that maybe it just was the offense. Exceptional footwork, great after the catch, physical player in space, exceptional complimentary piece alongside Xavier Worthy. And part of the reason Texas did make it to the college football playoff they had more than one weapon. They had another guy taking the tops off of defenses and winning at the point of attack. He's everything that you look for in a complimentary wide receiver number two at the next level. And there is a ton of talk that this could be one of the biggest risers in the NFL draft. I like A.D. Mitchell a lot. I think A.D. Mitchell is going to be a fixture at the next level. If he has a good combine, do not be shocked. Pick 31 rolls around. Pick 32 rolls around. Kansas City Chiefs are on the clock. And they land a brand new wide receiver one. His name comes from the 40 acres. Another wide receiver, Xavier Legit, definitely one that I think has stopped, has lost a little bit of momentum. Start of the year, very talented player. Everyone was talking about him as potentially being that first round pick. Then the momentum took a little bit of a step back, but this is what the combine's all about. It was not me, it was the team as a whole. I was one of the positives of this moment. Think about this for a second. Where would South Carolina be after Juice Walls went down if they didn't have Spencer Rattler and Xavier Legit? Two and ten, three and nine, four and eight. Then they finished five and seven. And I'm not saying that that's a good thing if you're an SEC fan, especially in Columbia. But what I am saying is you be thankful that you had a guy like Legit on your roster because if you didn't, you were in a lot of trouble. There's talk of him being an early day two selection, maybe even the back end of the first round, much like Adonai Mitchell. If he has a good combine, runs exceptionally, does well with the broad jump, interviews extremely well, 
there is a chance for legit to probably be a top 50 pick. He is legit. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him find his way into first round conversations, not going to find his way into first round conversations, but definitely will, I think be in the running for round two. Lad McConkey from Georgia. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Uh, he is not Wes Welker 2.0. He is not Julian Edelman. In fact, he is better than both of those two were when he was coming out of Georgia. Exceptional route runner, good physicality, really nice speed actually in the open field. And he brings that element of consistency across the middle. People want to talk all the time about the wide receivers, the wide receivers, Brock Bowers, Brock Bowers. Well, when you look at a team like Georgia, part of the reason why they were able to get the ball to Brock Bowers is they realized you had to cover Loud McConkey. And part of the reason why Loud McConkey got the ball was you realized you had Brock Bowers. So you had to play emotional. You had to play certain matchups and schemes that worked for everybody involved. And McConkey was one of those players that benefited from having a guy like Brock Bowers. But he also did a lot of his own good stuff. Great twitch, great vertical blend, great at the point of attack, exceptional tracker of the football too. So I would not be shocked to see him with a good combine with an overall decent outing, really good numbers, probably find his way into the top 50 picks. I'm definitely not going to go first round, but if he were to be somebody that maybe is able to just gain a little bit of ground here or there, that's probably what you're looking for. I got one more. For, I got uh, one more for you. Kentucky running back. Sweet baby Ray Davis. I'm interested. If I get a bowling ball running back that is not afraid to lower his shoulder and say, come and bring me down. Yeah, I want him on my team. And according to people that I spoke to last night around Indianapolis, he is probably the biggest boom or bust running back here. He has good numbers. He weighs in well. He shows that he carries the weight exceptional. There's conversations of him joining that top two or three conversation, uh, top two or three ranking among running backs, alongside the Jonathan Brookses, alongside the Bucky Irvings, the Jalen Wrights. But with a bad showcase, well, now you're going to limit him to probably a one-dimensional running back on an offense that really has been a hit and miss at times. You watch what he did last season coming on over from Vanderbilt. He exploded against Florida. And if you get that type of burst every single game, even if it's on 10 or 12 carries, there's value for that. The value is not that running backs don't matter. It's that they're replaceable. And a guy like Ray Davis could be replacing your NFL team's favorite running back in the not-so-distant future and he gets to place later on. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure that you also hit the ring notification. That way you keep up with everything that we're doing here on SEC Unfiltered. Like the show. Make sure that you follow me at my own show on my own YouTube channel, at Mr. Cole Thompson. Make sure that you also download the podcast wherever you get your podcast listening systems, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. And for all SEC info, make sure you visit secunfiltered.com. I'm Cole Thompson, live from Indianapolis at the NFL Scouting Combine. Until next time, later. Thank <laughs> you.